If anybody thinks the new Biden sanctions on Russia are going to have some crippling financial effect or cause some real wartime pain, please think again. What Russia understands is money and oil. And these new Biden sanctions, just like the old ones, will not do any serious damage to the Putin war machine. An investigative report by the Wall Street Journal shows how a mysterious trader from Azerbaijan assembled a secret global trading network that has basically allowed Russia to sell their oil to places around the world like China, Turkey, India, South Africa, Iran, and who knows where else. Not only has clandestine trading network made a mockery of Biden's so-called energy sanctions, but it's also made a mockery of the so-called $60 a barrel price cap. Russian petroleum sales surpassed $180 billion last year. That, according to the International uh, Energy Agency, it's only slightly below pre-war revenues in 2021, just slightly below. Now, of course, if Biden had listened to Trump and drill, baby, drill, and the U.S. is producing 15 million barrels a day, like we should be, and oil prices were closer to 40 than 80, then Putin would never have had any money to finance his Ukraine war. But he does have money. He is producing somewhere between 10 and 11 million barrels a day. It's about the same as pre-war. Meanwhile, the Bidens have never enforced what's called secondary sanctions. In other words, they've never stopped third-party countries, like a China or an India or a Turkey or an Iran, probably several others, never stopped them from doing business with Russia. Never. Furthermore, the Biden administration has never fully sanctioned Russia's big oil companies or Russia's big banks who lend to the oil companies. There were carve-outs all over the place. And finally, the Bidens are afraid to seize the Russian Central Bank reserve funds that are now part of them in the United States and the rest of them around the world. I think the United States has five or six billion of them and the rest of them in Europe. European Union has something like 280 billion. These are Russian central bank foreign exchange reserves been frozen offshore uh, for the last two years. All right, it's just kind of like the secondary sanction failure. The Bidens are afraid to seize these assets, right? Now, assets are in what? Foreign exchange, currencies, gold, probably bonds, but the Bidens won't take them. A Wall Street Journal editorial yesterday pointed out President George H.W. Bush seized Iraqi central bank assets in the early 90s, remember? Some 50 billion in Iraqi funds were liquidated and paid out to cover the cost of Saddam Hussein's crazy Kuwait invasion. In 2022, just a couple years ago, about three and a half billion of assets belonging to the Afghanistan Central Bank, they were liquidated and used for relief. The West could use some or all of these Russian central bank reserves as collateral for loans to Ukraine, or a big chunk could be liquidated and shuttled over to finance Ukraine. Congressman French Hill of Arkansas has been working on these plans for nearly two years. Both Senate and House committees have approved the seizure and use of the Russian monetary reserves. Some of those reserves could even be put into a U.S. Treasury, could be used as collateral for U.S. loans to the Ukraine. Anyway, none of this has been done by the Bidens. Their sanctions are sanctions in name only. They're not working. It's not, oh, not enforcing the sanctions in Iran. It's just like that, not enforcing those Iranian sanctions either. The Bidens are always afraid of roiling the waters, afraid of escalation. How about just that the Bidens are afraid? You know, if they had backbone, they could inflict some serious financial damage on Vladimir Putin. Wall Street would call it a Putin put. That is, go short Putin because the U.S. would be inflicting serious monetary punishment. But that's not going to happen. And so this dreadful war is going to continue. All right, that's my riff. Now.